Okay, so this video is here to help you analyze your data. There's two types of data that we'll be looking at. One is if you have continuous data, and in that case, with the information that we have here, we're going to produce an XY scatter plot. From that, we can fit a trend line to the data at an R squared value and look at how closely our data fits the line of best fit or the trend line that we uh, that we add to it. So you can see here I've set my data up with my X data in the first column and my Y data in the second column. Rather than setting it up in multiple columns, um, this is all of our raw data. So I've measured the height of the foam produced in the catalase reaction at 8 degrees Celsius and you see for that one I did 5 replicates. I did it again at 24 degrees, this time I did it for 6 replicates. It doesn't, doesn't matter, it's, there's nothing wrong with um, different numbers of replicates in this case. Um, I've done it at 40 degrees, once again I did, I, I've got 6 replicates and then 65 degrees and I've got six replicates there. So step one is just to create our XY scatter plot. So that's quite simple. We select our data, including our labels. We insert a chart and it picks a scatter chart for us straight away. We wanna always make sure that the scatter chart is what we use. Okay, because it's looking at a relationship between our um, independent and dependent variables. So you can see we've got all of our data here now. We're actually going to get rid of this title because it's better for us to place our title underneath our figures in our report and it just gets in the way here. So straight away, we're just going to get rid of that title and start cleaning things up a little. Next step is to come across here and customize our information and we're going to add a trend line. So when we customize, we click on series and we come down here and we'll see that we want a trend line. Now you can see that that trend line doesn't fit our data very well. We can tell that because it's there's a lot of spread of the data around it, but we can also um, add our R squared value which shows us how well our trend line actually fits our data. A R squared value close to one, or a R squared value of one means that our data fits our, um, or our trend line fits our data perfectly. So obviously the closer that value is to one, the better our trend line fits our data. So we click on show R squared. You can see up the top here, gives us an R squared value of 0 0.027, which isn't very good. So if we change our type of trend line, we should be able to see that we fit the pattern. And hopefully you can see that there's a bit of a pattern where it moves up, but then it comes down again. So the best pattern for us to use there is actually polynomial. So in this case, we can see now that our R squared value is 0.776, which is a much better R squared value than what we had before. Unfortunately, Google Sheets doesn't allow us to change that um, trend line too much. Um, we can change the number of degrees, okay, so we can increase the number of degrees of that trend line, have a bit of a play around with that. Um, I would say that, you know, that, that fits our data better. You can see, look, our R squared value here, 0.892. So playing around with our trend line in that way, um, we're starting to actually fit our data, fit the trend in our data um, much better. Last thing I'm going to do is just change where the legend is. I don't like the legend being up the top. I'm going to position that at the bottom. It's out of the way now. Makes things a little bit easier for us to see. So that really um, gives us a good indication of um, how we should be able to analyze this type of data where we have continuous data both um, temperature and height. 
we would classify as continuous data uh, and therefore we can do what we see here, we do our regression, getting our R squared value. I hope that helps.